Hello friends, today's topic of discussion is Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi theory and practice. In the earlier discussion on Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, popularly known as Mahatma Gandhi, we talked about the various facets of Gandhi, that how he was instrumental in a movement which was launched in South Africa against racism and when Gandhi came to India in 1915, we find that he was very well known person. And the kind of work which was done by Gandhi in India was also very instrumental in the context of the waging, the kind of war which was waged against the British by the people those who wanted to throw, throw them out of the Indian nation. So, in that sense, when we tend to understand Gandhi or the various kinds of ideas which were preached by Gandhi, some of the references could be Hindu Swaraj, which was written by Gandhi in 1909, or My Experiments with Truth, which is an autobiography of Gandhi, or the collected works of Mahatma Gandhi by D.G. Tendulkar. So, we find that these kinds of readings, they provide an insight about the various kinds of ideas which Gandhi himself had. And apart from that, we have a lot of source material which has been written on Gandhi and libraries, they are filled with the books which are on Gandhi because Gandhi has been a personality which has been the various kinds of thoughts of Gandhi whether the economic, social, political, ethical, all thought of Gandhi has been debated by the historians in their own way. And his contribution to the national movement has also been discussed by the historians at different levels as well as the social and political scientists as well. And the Gandhian mass movement has also been an important concern in the Indian national movement and the modern Indian history as well. So, we find that how Gandhi places a lot of importance on the issue of Satya and Ahinsa and the various kinds of techniques which have been used by Gandhi in his journey, whether he is taking some kind of a help from Bhagavad Gita or whether he was influenced by other, other scholars like Ruskin, Thoreau and Tolstoy, whether Gandhi was talking in the framework of Khadi or Swadeshi and how he was also indulging in the hand spinning as well and the ideas of Gandhi in the framework of developing some kind of a self-reliance. And uh, in the last lecture, we were, were also talking about the issue of or the concept of trusteeship that Gandhi how for a holistic national unity, he believes that there should not be any kind of a gap between um, the haves and the have nots and it should be reduced further as well. So, the concept of Gandhi in the context of trusteeship was very important in that context because Gandhi believes that this idea uh, is intrinsic in the Gandhian notion of Sarvodaya which is the maximum benefit of all. And Gandhi also talks in the framework of wiping out the exploitation of every type and the economic advantages which are percolating down to the people who are at the last rungs of society. So, Gandhi also talks about these kinds of ideas and in that sense he uh, believes that the producers of the material wealth, they should act as the trustees and they should utilize the resources for the benefit of the country. And Gandhi believes in the moral uh, kind of fabric of the individuals and he believes that individuals by nature uh, are good and if we will give them that kind of an opportunity, uh, then they will be able to show their, uh, their, their good half in that sense. And uh, by the economic independence, Gandhi intended the economic upliftment of the each individual that how uh, people uh, or the citizens, they are economically uplifted. And we also find that Gandhi was also criticized on this issue because he advocated the concept of trusteeship which in a way favored the capitalist class. So, Gandhi has uh, been a kind of a, a, a leader who has also been criticized on this issue that he was in a way trying to uh, in a way support the capitalist class and he was trying to identify with them as well. But on, at the same time we also find that if we tend to see the appeal of Gandhi, he was able to identify himself with the masses uh, that were oppressed and dispossessed and the kind of constructive work in which Gandhi engages himself, efforts towards the uh, removal of untouchability, the propagation of the Hindu Muslim unity, they were reflective of his approach uh, towards the idea of the national unity. And uh, Gandhi believes that through the constructive work, he will be able to create some kind of an awareness among the masses. And when everyone will be at the same platform, when he talks about the removal of uh, untouchability, then the uh, 
uh, real Swaraj will come this is what Gandhi personally believes and we also find that Gandhi also talks about the emancipation of women that how uh, women they could be emancipated uh, by their own participation in the national movement and that is how Gandhi uh, in that sense uh, in a way invites women to join the national movement and when women they join the national movement uh, we, we find uh, that Gandhi believes that this is also an extension of their household duties because when more and more women they will be part of the national movement then the entire household including the children they will be taught about uh, the importance of the national movement. So, the entire household will be linked to the national movement. So, Gandhi in a way favored the identity of the interests of the diverse sections those who were participating in the national movement and in the intense opposition of the colonial uh, divide and rule policy which aimed to create the dissensions to fulfill the interests of the colonialist. So, we find that uh, how Gandhi wanted to bring all people on one platform and uh, he also realized that how uh, the British policy of the divide and rule which they uh, followed in India when they came to India uh, since the 18th century. So, this kind of a policy of divide and rule was a hallmark of the British and most of the time they were trying to project themselves as just rulers which was totally uh, opposite uh, to what they were actually doing in India. And the, uh, it has been written by so many economic historians the kind of loot in which British engaged in India and how the wealth of Britain developed at the cost of India and how the poverty and famines which were the reflective of the 19th century and the poverty of India in the earlier part of the 20th century was because of the colonial policies which were followed in India. So, we Gandhi was trying to put that kind of a perspective to the masses and we find that Satyagraha was one of the techniques which was used by Gandhi which was the pursuit of truth that is the Satyagraha a simple method to secure justice and independence. So, Gandhi believes that a true Satyagri is non-violent in nature, he is not a coward and to be non-violent requires more strength than being violent. So, Gandhi's belief was that, that if one is a Satyagrahi then he is a very strong kind of a person because cowards cannot practice Satyagraha. And Gandhi also believes that if one is talking about the non-violence then uh, you need a lot of strength to be non-violent than to be a violent person. So, Gandhi believes that, that the people those who are more strong, the people those who have that kind of a will which is a strong will they can only uh, be a satyagrahi because they have to in a way uh, uh, tolerate a lot of things from the colonial rulers and uh, their toleration does not mean that they are a coward person rather they are more strong that is why they are being able to tolerate uh, which was being inflicted on them. So, we find that the concept of Gandhi in the context of non-operation was in a kind of technique which was used successfully in the struggle and the emphasis was on the non-violent, non-cooperation as he believed that the success of violence is temporary and the results uh, finally uh, in more violence. So, Gandhi's emphasis on non-violence was in the framework of the non-cooperation and he had this kind of an idea that when uh, you are succeeding in life because of the violence it is a very transient kind of a thing and uh, it will finally lead to more kind of a violence. And he also believed that the social justice for the downtrodden could not be achieved by force but by appropriate training of the downtrodden by the non-violent means. So, we Gandhi believed that the people those who are at the lowest rungs of the society, the people those who are disadvantaged and they do not have any kind of a privileges. Uh, they you cannot achieve any kind of a social justice for them uh, by the violent means, but uh, you have to train uh, or provide appropriate training of the down, downtrodden by the non-violent means. So, this is what Gandhi believed in terms of the kind of ideas which he had and he also feels that the redressal of the injustices suffered by them could be realized and the means through which it could be achieved is the non-violent non-cooperation and the resistance to evil through the non-violence uh, why non-violent methods is to be undertaken in the uh, in the in the belief of the non-cooperation. So, we find that how when one is talking in the framework of the non-cooperation we find that there is a deed to secure uh, the self-respect and the honor. So, non-cooperation in that, se that sense was also a method of securing cooperation of the adversary to get the independence 
and justice without having any hatred towards him. Because Gandhi uh, always believed that a chance should be given to the opponent to reform himself. And he was also trying to seek the cooperation of the others or the adver adversaries uh, to get the independence. And he, Gandhi believed that uh, he, didn't, uh, he will not carry any kind of hatred towards uh, the opponents as well. So, in that sense we find that any kind of a success of the non cooperation is dependent upon the people's powers of the suffering and the self sacrifice and the non cooperation has a specific motive uh, behind it as well. And it cannot be separated from the truth as well because a true Satyagri will be able to in a way participate in the non cooperation movement. He will have those kinds of qualities which are are required to carry on that kind of a struggle which was based on non cooperation. And uh, non cooperation does not mean that you have to involve in any kind of a violence. So, non cooperation in that sense was also in the framework of the self suffering, and through the self suffering, uh, one could achieve that kind of an objective. Then, we also see that how through the non cooperation, uh, we find it was also some kind of a technique of securing justice and freedom for the individuals. And when Gandhi was talking about ahimsa and peace, non cooperation was also a vibrant force as ahimsa and peace were. And it was also dynamic in nature in that sense that uh, how it was trying to be uh, trying to be in dynamic in nature. And we find that uh, more vigorous, uh, it was more vigorous than the physical strength as well because uh, it required the strength of the mind. So, strength of the mind was comparatively more important uh, comparative to the physical strength and when uh, one has that kind of a strength then one is able to in a way handle every situation uh, which would come to, uh, to Satyagrahi. And uh, when you talk about the non-cooperation of Gandhi, we find that it was to be undertaken so as to make the opponent realize the futility of injustice in the operation which was perpetrated by him. So, we realize that ga how Gandhi was saying in that sense that how the opponent he has to realize or she has to realize the futility of injustice uh, and how injustice should not be meted out to the people those who are downtrodden, the people those who are dis uh, not privileged in that sense. And any kind of operation of these people was also totally against uh, the kind of ideas which Gandhi had. So, uh, Gandhi's emphasis in that sense was on the change of heart of the opponent and we find that Gandhi believed that if the opponent realizes that he had committed a mistake, then he should be given every opportunity to rectify the error. And we find that uh, Gandhi was not only instrumental in the various kinds of movements which were launched by Gandhi, uh, but Gandhi was also very important in terms of reforming a number of people because so many people those who got associated with Gandhi, they were influenced by the ideas and ideals of Gandhi and uh, they were they later became Gandhians in that sense and uh, when Gandhi was talking to them and Gandhi was interacting with them, then he was trying to, imba uh, he was trying to in a way convey the kind of principles or ideas which he had for himself. So, we find that the non-cooperation of Gandhi was against the principles of injustice and wrongdoing by the opponent and he feels that the truth and non-violence they were very integral to his very existence as well. So, in that sense when we try to understand Gandhi or his perspective we find that non-cooperation is a pursuit of truth or satyagraha a simple method to secure justice and independence and Gandhi says that he lays no claim to the superhuman powers and has truth and non-violence to fall back on in every situation in life. So, what we see is that Gandhian perspective is basically uh, whatever Gandhian perspective in terms of ideas is Gandhi is trying to put that perspective in practice as well. So, when he is trying to lead any kind of a movement, he is not trying to digress from the principles or the objectives which he has in his mind. and. Uh, these kinds of principles which were there with regard to truth and non-violence, satya and ahimsa, uh, they were very integral to the Gandhian thought and they have to be implemented at different levels, not only at the level of theory as we talked about, but at the level of practice as well. And we find that the political practice uh, of Gandhi became his political thought as well and uh, his contribution to the political thought and the practice is in that sense is very important and how he integrated the observance of the non-violence with 
resistance to injustice and the revolutionary action. So, we find that the as you can see on the screen as well. that the ideas of Thoreau they played an important role in the Gandhian concept of the civil disobedience. So, we find that the political thought and the practice of Gandhi they were very very important to any kind of injustice in the society and to bring a kind of change in the society. And uh, the thinkers those who had played an important role in, in evolution of the Gandhian thought in that sense uh, we also find that Gandhi was influenced by Thoreau in that context and uh, Thoreau was also influenced by the Emerson's political philosophy who in turn was motivated by Hindu religious traditions as well. So, we find that Thoreau's writings were closer to Hindu asceticism uh, which was explained in Bhagavad Gita and the philosophy of Gandhi and Thoreau could be summed up in one word that is simplify. So, we find that Gandhi was not in favor of unification by the strength of law or by means of any external force and Gandhi was focusing on the inner force and emphasized on moral values and the ethical strength. So, in that sense Gandhi was always in that sense was talking about the ethics, he was always trying to stick to the rules which he had framed for himself and this is evident in the various kinds of actions which were undertaken by Gandhi at different levels. And we also see that uh, the role which was played by Gandhi uh, in that context in terms of his ideas was also very, very important. And uh, we also find that how Gandhi was ready to identify with the minorities was both at the level of the beliefs and of his deeds as well. Uh, because there was some kind of a synchronization of belief and action on the part of Gandhi and the thought and practice was a hallmark of the Gandhian philosophy. So, we find that uh, what Gandhi was trying to communicate uh, to the audience, uh, he also want, uh, what he was preaching to the audience in the various meetings which he uh, participated, he was also trying to put that into practice as well. And we at different points of time we have talked about that how Gandhi was a religious person and uh, when he was uh, trying to convey the various kinds of ideas, it was also through uh, religion as well. And at different points of time, we also find uh, that uh, Gandhi uh, in that sense was uh, trying uh, to in a way move in a direction where his beliefs and ideas uh, they could be put into practice as well. And uh, most of the time, uh, we find that Gandhi was continuously emphasizing the national unity and the various kinds of movements which have been written on the screen in the framework of the Khilafat movement or the non-cooperation movement, civil disobedience movement or the quit India movement or the various kinds of work in the framework of the constructive work or the Hindu Muslim unity. All they were being done to achieve the unity of India and Gandhi personally believes that if all the sections of the society when they will come on a one platform then only the true unity of India would be achieved. And that is why he was very sensitive to the various kinds of issues which were concerning the different sections of the society and that is how uh, he also plans uh, in a way that the various sections of the society they could come on one platform for carrying on, carrying on the struggle against the colonial rule. Some scholars they also in a way criticized Gandhi for playing down the distinctions among the various sections involved in the national movement and uh, to carry together so many communities uh, we have to argue was a very different ki difficult kind of a task rather it was Herculean in nature and all these communities they had diverse interests as well. So, the, to the critics I would like to argue that it uh, if we do not have any kind of a leader, mass leader as Gandhi was and Gandhi is not only uh, being talked about in India, he is also being talked about in various other countries of the world and his ideas and his politics has also been in a way recognized in different platforms and in different countries as well. So, uh, when uh, in a, the criticism of a person is a very easy thing to be done, but at the same time we also have to see the context, we also have to see uh, the background of those times and uh, in that sense we do not find in modern history any mass leader with a single minded focus on truth and non-violence to influence 
so many people for so long a time. So, in that sense we find that Gandhi was comparatively uh, more successful in that sense and uh, we also see that how uh, uh, various kinds of documentaries or news reels they were being made on Gandhi uh, during uh, that particular time of the national movement and we find that they were being banned by the colonial government, the colonial government did not want uh, that Gandhi should be shown uh, to be to the people in the various topicals or documentaries or the news reels which were made by different companies. And we find that uh, a number of all, all these news reels they were being banned by the British government and uh, these kinds of records they are available in the National Archives of India that so many documentaries they were being banned by the colonial government. And we find that so many films uh, they also seek some kind of an inspiration from Gandhi where we find that a number of films like uh, film called Rath for example in 1931 which was made or for example Bhakt Vidur. All of them they were trying to communicate some kind of ideas which were concerned with the Gandhian movement or even uh, Raja Harishchandra uh, who was very insistent on truth was also seen in that framework because Gandhi was also talking about truth and non-violence. So, uh, we find that how uh, the media uh, during that particular period whether in the framework of the news papers or the journals or pamphlets or for that matter news reels or documentaries or films they were trying to borrow something from uh, Gandhi, Gandhism. And we also find that a number of documentaries even after independence they were also being made. Uh, Life of Gandhi was made in 1968 which was a documentary. And one of the most uh, popular films which was made on Gandhi at international level was Gandhi uh, with the title of Gandhi by Richard Attenborough which was made in 1982. And this uh, film became uh, because it was an international production because of which it had a wider reach. And uh, this film keeping in mind uh, the times because it was made in 82 and by that time various kinds of media channels they were not even available in India. So, this film became quite popular which was trying to convey the kind of work uh, with which Gandhi was associated in India. Then there was another film by Sham Benegal the making of Mahatma in 1996 and this film was also trying to convey the, uh, the kind of Gandhian work the beginnings which were there in South Africa. And then there was another film called Hiram which was made in 2000 and this particular film was trying to uh, communicate not only the ideals of Gandhi but also shows that how Gandhi was killed in this, uh, in this film uh, how he has been shown. So, uh, then there is another film called Mene Gandhi Ko Nahi Mara in 2005, then Lage Rahu Munna Bhai in 2006 and Gandhi My, Fa My Father in 2007. So, we find that all these kinds of uh, films which were made on Gandhi in the later times they were trying to communicate something or other about Gandhi as Mene Gandhi Ko Nahi Mara is not a direct film on Mahatma Gandhi, but uh, it is a film which is trying to communicate through the protagonist who has these kinds of ideals of which are related to Gandhi and Gandhism. Then another film called Lagero Munna Bhai talks about Gandhi Giri which was a new kind of an idea uh, and it was a kind of a comedy film which was trying to show Gandhi in its own light and it was very very popular. It became a box office success as well and the ideals of Gandhi they reached uh, to the common masses in a different manner in this particular film. And Hiralal Gandhi who was the son of Gandhi his perspective could be seen uh, in a film called Gandhi My Father which was made in 2007. So, this film largely shows Gandhi as an individual how he is collaborating or living his life and how his family especially his son Hiralal, Hiralal Gandhi was connected with him and the kind of relationship both of them they share is also being shown in this film. And we also see that how Gandhi as a leader became important or inspiration uh, to many leaders of the world and BP Koirala of Nepal or Nelson Mandela of South Africa or Martin Luther King Jr. in USA all of them they were being influenced by the ideals of Gandhi and Gandhism. And we find that uh, uh, so many seminars etc they are also being uh, they are also being conducted nowadays uh, with the title is Gandhism or Gandhi relevant today. And these kinds of seminars they were being conducted uh, around 30, 50, 70 years back as well where the relevance of Gandhi and Gandhism has been uh, done at different levels.
So, we find that the various leaders uh, as I have told you that they, they have been influenced and, and, and how Gandhi as a figure is being respected across the world and uh, we also find that how these kinds of ideals which Gandhi had to secure an egalitarian and a democratic world, they have been talked about by the various scholars at different levels. And uh, critics also have uh, the, uh, talked about Gandhi in their own way, uh, but uh, we can also see the kind of colonial situation which was there in India and it was a very difficult kind of a task to bring together so many uh, sections of society at one platform and uh, by which the independence of India could be achieved. So, the relevance of Gandhi to the contemporary world uh, is time and again very important and we also always talk about the relevance of Gandhi and we see that uh, the various uh, kinds of uh, historical schools, they have also uh, talked about Gandhi whether you see the Marxist school, whether you see the colonialist school, whether uh, you see the nationalist school or the various other schools, they have tried to show Gandhi in their own way. Some of them, they have been critical of Gandhi and we have also seen that uh, the others, those who have tried to see Gandhi in a different kind of a light. So, uh, the various schools, whether the imperialist or the nationalist or the Marxist, they have their own ideas with regard to Gandhi and Gandhism. And we also see uh, to summarize, one can also in a way argue that Gandhi generally had some kind of a consistency in his belief and action. And the various kinds of ideas which Gandhi talked about, what he preached, uh, uh, he tried to put them in practice as well. And the truth and the non-violence, they were uh, very, very important to Gandhi and he employs various kinds of techniques, whether keeping fast or satyagraha, uh, which was undertaken by Gandhi. So, with this, I would like to end the discussion. Thank you very much.